Good morning all. I'm charging my bike battery again using the Turnergy charger from a lead acid battery because uh, this lead acid battery is always charged via solar and uh, this system works. The Turnergy does behave a bit strange at times. Um, when the cells are out of balance I had to turn the Turnergy's current right down to get it to balance them but now they're balanced I would imagine I can uh, charge this at full current and it'll behave itself. I haven't actually tried it yet, but uh, it's good enough. It works. I can charge the battery, go out on the bike, and uh, the energy that I'm using is all free. Solar power. So I've started it charging, uh, three amps. I'm at 28 volts. That's gonna go to 28.8. In fact, I can show that by pressing the deck button to show the end voltage, 28.8. Now, if I show the cell voltages, they're all beautifully in balance, 3.44. For the first four cells, 3.44 across the board for the second four, so it's all good. Now while I sit here watching this thing, because I don't entirely trust it yet, um, I've been thinking about alternative ways to balance charge uh, lithium cells, because this system of balance charging using resistors, which are put across the cells via the balance lead, that just draw energy out of the battery, and basically turn it into heat is a total waste. And it doesn't really appeal to someone who's interested in solar power. What you really want is a system that can take energy out of one cell and put it into another. So here are some lithium cells and the system that uh, the Turnergy uses and the, the common system that's in use is simply to take a resistor, place it across any cell that uh, has a high voltage. So the current flowing from the main charger through the entire uh, series array of cells is bypassed through the resistor. Now, of course, in these balanced chargers, you don't have big 10 watt resistors like this. You have feeble little resistors, so the whole process takes forever. There must be a better way. So I've read that there are systems using capacitors. Now, this isn't an axial capacitor, which it really should be for this, but um, the idea, I suppose, I don't really know how it works. Uh, apparently, they don't work terribly well. And I can almost see why. If you've got a cell that's high, let's say the middle cell is high, the capacitor is placed across the cell, charge is transferred into the capacitor, the voltage is become balanced, and then the capacitor is moved, not physically of course, it would have to be uh, moved via a switching matrix, which seems like it's going to be ever so complicated, but it's moved to a low voltage cell, and then a small amount of charge is transferred from the capacitor to that cell, uh, because there is a slight voltage difference, but it's not that big. These cells, uh, even when they're out of balance, are all within, well, less than a volt. I mean, it's, it's a small amount. So this capacitor would have to be moved backwards and forwards from the high cell to the low cell very, very rapidly to transfer any amount of significant charge from one to the other. And as I say, the switching matrix, to have one capacitor be able to be moved between, I don't know, up to eight cells, would just be horrendously complex. So then I thought about uh, inductors. Could inductors be used to take the charge out of one cell and put it in another? Now there is a bit of a problem here. If I put this inductor across uh, this left-hand cell, when I remove it, that I'm going to get uh, a back EMF. So I'd have to sort of flip it and put it on the second cell. But after I thought about this for a while, I came up with a solution. And uh, it's very early days, but I thought I'd just present this and uh, see if I've got this right or wrong and just see if anyone's got any ideas about whether this might work or not work. So this is the circuit I'm proposing. Um, I've simplified it to two cells now so it's a bit easier to see what's going on and the idea is to transfer charge from this cell to the right hand cell even though these two are still connected in series and the idea is to put a inductor here between the two cells, a MOSFET switch which can pull the inductor down to this uh, lower voltage end, so this is the drain here and the source will connect to here and then there's a circuit which can drive the gate of this MOSFET. Now when you switch this MOSFET on, this end of the inductor is pulled down to the more negative end of the cell. The inductor initially resists a change in the flow of current, that's what inductors do. The current will gradually increase, of course you don't want to uh, get too much current flowing, you don't want the induct a piece of wire directly across the cell for very long. So this would only be turned on very briefly. Now when this is turned off, the inductor will do a backflip. It'll generate back EMF. So this point here 
will go to a high voltage. Of course, if there's no uh, current flowing, that voltage goes theoretically infinitely high, but certainly it would go high enough to reach the potential at this more positive end of the second cell. Now, if I put a diode, Schottky diode, between this point of the inductor and the second cell, then the charge in the inductor should be transferred through the diode into the second cell. So by switching this on and then off, I've transferred a pulse of charge from the left-hand cell to the right-hand cell. In other words, from the more negative voltage cell to the more positive voltage cell. But is it going to work? Well, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to have to mock this up um, with an Arduino doing pulse width modulation on the MOSFET. Uh, I'll probably fully uh, charge this left-hand cell, fully discharge the right-hand cell, obviously to a safe voltage, put a couple of voltmeters on these two cells, and then gradually increase the pulse width modulation on a little pot, and see if charge is transferred from the left cell to the right cell through the inductor. Now, of course, there are a number of issues with this. Um, one, of course, is that you can't transfer charge from the right-hand cell back to the left-hand cell using this circuit. So if it's the right-hand cell that's the uh, one that's reached maximum voltage, then you simply put another circuit on, repeat this circuit, and that would transfer its ex excess charge to the next one up the line. Now, any cell that doesn't require charge um, will simply have the same circuit again and pass it up to the next one up the line. And the one at the top of the line will probably have the familiar resistive circuit to bleed off all the excess charge coming from all the cells further down the line. So in a worst case scenario where the cells at the more positive end of the string um, become charged first, then we're not really gaining anything because they'll just bleed their charge out through this resistor at the end of the line. But if it's the other way around and the cells at the more negative end uh, reach maximum voltage first, then we do get a system which transfers charge up the line of cells. So that's something I'm going to set up in the next uh, few days or weeks. Um, I'll make up a project board for this so that I can fit uh, these inductors, diodes, MOSFETs. Now I probably will actually use these ultra fire batteries um, because they're very low capacity. They say 3000 milliamp hours, they're more like five or 600. And that means that uh, when I'm experimenting with transferring charge from one to another, things will happen reasonably quickly because they don't hold a lot of charge. So while I've been rabbiting on, the Turnergy has uh, reached an equilibrium, I think, or at least a full charge situation. We're now at 28.8 volts, that's the end voltage. It's wound the current down from 3 amps to 0.3 amps, and the cells are all 358, 359, 358, 359. Everything's in balance. So it's not wonderful weather, but I think uh, it's good enough to uh, stick the battery in the bike and uh, go and have a little bit of a bike ride. Cheerio!